Hey, it's Dr. Stephen Bradley, your friendly neighborhood anesthesiologist. I'm back today to talk some more about anesthesia. Today I'm answering a question that I've received frequently, why can't I eat before my surgery? So one of the most upsetting things for patients that are preparing to have a surgical procedure is usually not being able to eat the night before. Different organizations or hospitals may have different rules. I'm here to clear up some of that and explain why we have those uh, plans in place for our patients. So taking it back to the Latin, what we often write for orders the night before surgery are NPO. So you may have heard this, make that patient NPO for surgery in the morning. That comes from the Latin, which is nil per os, or nothing by mouth. So through research and reviewing cases, the American Society of Anesthesiologists has come up with guidelines for when you should stop eating before your surgical procedure. We know that when you eat, obviously there's food in your stomach and it takes a little bit of time to digest that food so that it passes into your small and large intestines and ultimately out of your body. We're concerned when undergoing an anesthetic because if there's food in your belly, we don't wanna see that food again, especially not when we're manipulating your airway. Depending on the type of procedure, depending on the type of the procedure, we always have a backup plan of a general anesthetic which would mean that we are breathing for you in that case. In order to induce that general anesthetic, we give you medication through an IV or have you breathe anesthetic gas until you fall asleep. When you fall asleep, you no longer have airway reflexes that will prevent you from coughing, gagging, and uh, prevent you from aspirating anything that comes out of the stomach. That's why we want your stomach as empty as possible before going off to sleep. Even for some minor procedures where we don't plan on having you go off to sleep, sometimes during the procedure you may get nauseated or feel like you need to throw up, or we always have a backup plan in case for your health or safety we needed to place that breathing device. The recommendations by the American Society of Anesthesiologists are eight hours NPO, eight hours no paras prior to a surgical procedure where an anesthetic is being provided. So, Based on the research that they have done, it takes about eight hours for food to pass from the stomach and out of the body to a point where that aspiration risk is a lot lower. It is somewhat dependent upon what you eat. We have different time parameters for different substances. So the shortest parameter is two hours. Before your surgery, you cannot have anything to drink two hours before. This is most true for water and clear liquids because we do distinguish between the different types of liquid that you can drink. For the kids out there, breast milk is a four hour hold. You can't have breast milk within four hours of your procedure. We say a light meal, which would include something that is not fatty, so maybe a couple of crackers. That can be consumed within six hours of surgery, but if you've had anything with fat or a lot of protein, that is the full eight hour hold time. Now, a lot of places say NPO at midnight, so you can't eat anything after midnight. Why is that? It's because as we're running this large organization of operating room and hospital, we wanna improve and maximize efficiency. So every day there's cases that get shuffled around and moved up, some get moved later. So if these cases were to get moved up, then we wanna make sure that you have fulfilled that required time since you last ate. It's all for your health and safety. That's why we do the things that we do. So the problem that occurs if we get too specific with some of these recommendations with the eight hours, it may not leave enough time if your surgery was to move up in the day. Now, what do we do in case of emergencies? Sometimes there's time that we cannot wait enough time because uh, it's an emergency procedure. Maybe there's a car accident or a gunshot wound or something. We need to proceed with this surgery. There's different precautions that we can take, but the risk is a lot higher that there could be an aspiration event. That is when fluids or secretions or stomach acid gets into the lung. So we do everything we can to avoid that. There are medications that we can give to help decrease the acidity in the stomach. Sometimes we'll place a tube that goes down the back of your throat into the stomach to help decompress and get those contents out. All those can help decrease the risk of aspiration. 
But for those of you that are wondering, and no, it's not because your surgeons and anesthesiologists are cruel and evil people and want you to come in hungry. We actually uh, do have a very good reason to ask that you not eat the night before your surgery. If you have any other questions to ask an anesthesiologist, I'm Stephen Bradley, your friendly neighborhood anesthesiologist. Feel free to go to web my website, stephenbradleymd.com. There's a link there where you can submit questions that I'll be able to answer here in a video format. Um, like this video, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, however you're feeling. Subscribe to the channel to know more. Please refer this to any friends or family members that maybe uh, have a surgical procedure coming up in the near future so they can come and learn more. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you next time.